Hey guys, this is Gaijin Hunter. There's been an explosion of details around Monster Hunter Rise and the 43 minutes of gameplay footage that they showed at Tokyo Game Show. In this video, I want to rearrange the information in a way that makes it easier to follow. First and most important is the wire bug, the main new feature of Monster Hunter Rise, and this feature fundamentally changes both exploration and hunting. You get two wire bugs in the game, but you can collect a third wire bug in the map that you can use for the remainder of the hunt. Wire bugs are deployed using the ZR button, and when sheathed, there are three major actions that you can do with them. First, you can do an upward thrust. We can see this in the trailers is used to give hunters access to aerial attacks. This is basically adding a jump button to Monster Hunter. This will use up one gauge, and outside of battle with your weapon away, it seems to recharge in just about six seconds. Around the map, there are also special plants that you can use to power up your wire bug for a single explosive jump to get up to a higher area. The second motion you can do is a forward thrust. This will fling your hunter forward fast and can be done both on the ground and in the air. We can see the forward thrust used in the trailers both outside and during combat, and during battles, it seems to open up new paths for different combos. The final wire bug motion doesn't require any gauge at all and appears to be something that you can do only while you're in the air. It summons the wire bug and lets you just hang on for a few seconds. You can hang on as long as the momentum has you swinging. Once the swing is naturally gone, your hunter will drop down. Or you can jump off in any direction from this move. The wire bugs are used for traversal around the maps, so when combined with the ability to scale any wall or slope, it means that you can go anywhere you can see. The wire bugs also integrate into combat as well. Outside using that upward thrust to do aerial attacks and the forward thrust to open up new combo paths, each weapon has a variety of special wire bug arts that they can pull off, some requiring one gauge and some requiring two. The rate in which the bug gauge will recharge after the skill is different depending on both the attack and the weapon. Using the wire bug is going to be a major strategic part of combat in Monster Hunter Rise. For example, if you get knocked down from a monster and you have gauge available, you can use the wire bug to instantly escape that situation, or you can simply move around and avoid attacks, or if you have an opening you can use the wire bug skills to really do some punishing damage. How you balance these is really going to come down to how you like to play, and to me this is almost like finding both a way to take the best moves from Generations Ultimate and the best moves from Iceborne, but put them in the game where they're more balanced. For example, the Helm Splitter for the Longsword is now a wire art, so you can't just do it over and over again. Or even stuff like the Adept Counter for Dual Blades is also a wire art as well. So you still have access to these powerful moves, but you gotta think a little bit more about timing and when you wanna use them. So this is genius and feels almost like Hunter Styles. I think we're gonna see lots of different ways that different people will approach each weapon, and that is exciting. Now, moving on to exploration, there's a new concept called the sub-area, which is these dark colored areas on the map. Here you can find useful endemic life, sometimes behind breakable objects, and these now function more like slinger ammo, in that you'll collect the endemic life and you can use them later for various effects. Or you can collect temporary buffs from these awesome birds that are all over the map. The green bird raises your max health by a little bit, the yellow bird raises your stamina max limit, the orange raises your defense, and the red one will raise your attack. The game will still have temporary boost items, this is just one more way to buff up that players can have fun finding routes to monsters that bring them through these areas to collect buffs on the way there. Large monsters cannot enter sub-areas, so this essentially brings back that idea of running away to another area to heal up or collect yourself if you're overwhelmed during a hunt. There are hidden parts of each map and areas with lots of buffs to collect, so exploring the maps is not just fun, but functional as well. If you go into a hunt with a Palico and not a Palamute, you can just scale over cliffs and these type of sub-areas to get to the monsters while the other hunters ride around using their Palamutes. I love how well this balances the game. Speaking about Palamutes, the second main feature of this game is the addition of this new companion. Yes, you can interact and play with your companions in this game, although it has no actual effect on the gameplay, you can bring two companions into a hunt, be it two Palamutes, two Palicos, or one of each. Online with other players, you'll be able to choose one. You can use a new action panel to do quick actions with your companions, such as calling them over so that you can ride on them. Or you can just hold A when you're close to the Palamute to ride it as well. When riding a Palamute, you can freely move around, dash, or even jump. If the structure is the right height, you can jump on top of it. 
As far as traversing is concerned, you won't use any stamina while you ride on them, and you can sharpen your weapon or use consumables like potions, rations, or mite seeds while riding around on your friends. If a cliff has vines, you can run up it with the dog. If not, you could just use the wire bug and it will magically follow behind you. In battle, Palamutes will generally attack the monster and deal damage. If they run out of health, they'll disappear while they go back to recover and then they will return. Basically the same way that Palicos work. We saw in the gameplay that the Palicos have attacks like Mega Boomerangs, so it makes sense that the Palamutes in general, while they are aggressive attack companions, they'll have other skills to use as well. The structure of the hunt. When you start a hunt, you'll have an owl which you'll send out and it will mark the map with all the monsters in the area. The paintball item is removed from this game and there's no need for scout bugs as well. Just like Iceborne, you have a camp where you can access your item box to swap out items, the companion board to swap in and out palicos and palamutes, and the equipment box to change out your weapon and gear, as well as the ability to eat in case you forgot to. While they didn't go into details, there does appear to be a secondary camp on the map, so I'll just assume that you'll be able to warp between the two. A quick note on item restocking. I've had a change of opinion on this topic. I never thought about it too deeply, but I used to feel that I had many great hunting memories, and those were when I was running out of potions and I loved the tension that it gave the hunts. So I've kinda had this position that I felt it would be nice if the infinite item restock was not included in this game. I'm happy to admit I was wrong, and I agree that the pros heavily outweigh the cons here. And ultimately, it's an optional feature, and the game isn't balanced in a way that assumes that you will have to abuse it. Abusing restock may be possible, but there are tons of other cheese tactics available in Monster Hunter, and just because it can be used as a crutch doesn't mean that it's a bad mechanic. The ability to have more gunner ammo, access items should you decide to take on a secondary target, and just restock if you cart is more about player friendliness. As long as the monsters are fast and hit hard, that's where the difficulty will come into play. Speaking about items, the flex is gone when you have a potion, and you can now walk in the game as well when you're using it. The item is consumed immediately and you get a heal and then that extra back half as you walk and chug the remainder. I'm personally very happy to see this change is back and I think it would be fun if they included the flex as a gesture just as a nice call out. UI Lastly, the thing I want to cover is the UI and there's some great elements here. First, damage display is back, which I absolutely adored. And the coloring seems to be more pronounced in this game as they're designing the UI to be readable in portable mode on the Switch or Switch Lite. Let's look at the player HUD. First, we can see the health and stamina gauge now both show the current max value and also the potential max value. The sharpness gauge now shows all the sharpness of the weapon as well as the current sharpness, which is fabulous. The monster icons on the upper right all have a special ink drawing sort of taste to them now that this game is heavily Japanese themed. The quest objective is now shown on the left side of the screen. The map is on the lower left and can be zoomed in on. And I love this map, as you can clearly see where the hunting areas and the sub-areas are, where the monsters are, and where they're going to move to. And the area numbers online will make communication much easier. It's a large map, but with fast travel options, I think it'll feel just at home. A perfect middle ground between the older games and Monster Hunter World. And then there's the addition of the action panel for your companions, which I covered earlier in this video, the item panel we know and love. And they also brought back the radial menu. A good way of thinking of Rise is that this is Monster Hunter World as a mechanical base, but with the flashiness of Monster Hunter Generations and a unique splash of features new to Rise. They did mention that you can tone down or even disable your hunter speaking during the hunt if that is your preference. Oh, last and not least, yes, that is Blood. Overall, I think that covers most of what we saw. Monster Hunter Rise is essentially Monster Hunter World and Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate combined into one. It takes the very best of both generations and mixes them together in a unique way. I am absolutely in awe that the game looks and performs as well as it does on a machine that is one teraflop and can fit in your pocket. I do hope you guys enjoyed my recap of the features, and if you missed the presentation, I did upload a video where I translated the Japanese-only portion, which was 21 minutes of longsword footage. Capcom is just now starting the marketing campaign, and there's still six months to go, so they said they'll find ways to show us off the rest of the 14 weapons as they go forward, and no, they did not cut out any weapons, so don't worry about that. Let me know down in the comments below what you guys thought of the coverage at Tokyo Game Show, what you thought of the new trailers and the gameplay demonstrations, and if you're as hyped as I am, like this is literally the Monster Hunter of my dreams so far, and I can't wait to learn more about it, especially the hub town and its features. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and until next time, happy hunting.